go. I'm going to record at the computer. Okay, we are recording and welcome to uh, the session regarding internships is recorded so that other uh, students who weren't able to attend tonight can watch this and learn about it. And my, again, my name is Professor Rick Powers. I'm co-director with uh, the famous and uh, Dr. Beth Gilmore, who, uh, who if you haven't had the pleasure and honor of studying with her, taking a course with her, that's uh, something that you've got to do before you leave UHD because uh, she's amazing. So I'm going to hand it, hand it off to uh, Dr. Gilmore, and then I'll jump back in to uh, introduce myself a little bit more. And then in a couple little sections, I'll cover to help her out. But Dr. Gilmore, take it away. Thank you, Professor Powers. Very, very kind and nice introduction. And just so everybody knows, Professor Powers can be bought for $5. So for $5, you can get the same exact introduction. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, welcome, everyone. It's so nice to see you all. Um, we're always excited to see new students as well as returning students that are interested in um, in internships. So um, in case we haven't met, uh, as Professor Powers mentioned, I'm Dr. Beth Gilmore. I'm an assistant professor here in the Department of Criminal Justice and Social Work, teaching on the criminal justice side. And I've been um, with UHD now for seven, almost eight years. Uh, but before that, I actually spent quite a bit of time in the criminal justice world working as a practitioner. And I like to kind of tell my story and tell students about that because I think that it's um, it's important because it helps inform your internship and your internship process. So um, my story is that when I turned 18, um, like many, many 18 year olds, I wanted to be out on my own. And so what I did was I tried to find a full time job where I could also have um, health insurance benefits. And so I was able to secure a job kind of by chance um, working for a sheriff's office in Florida um, at a jail. And I worked interviewing inmates that um, were brought into our jail and assigning their housing based on a variety of factors like risk level and things like that. I did that for a few years. And while I was doing that, um, I was going to school for crime scene and I transferred within my department to work as a child abuse investigator. We were a privatized um, child abuse investigations that were civilian dr uh, driven child abuse investigations. I did that for a while. And while I was working in uh, child abuse investigations, I completed my crime scene degree. So I started working on a specialized team that investigated a lot of the child fatalities and did child fatality review boards and things like that. And then um, within my agency, I managed to get a civilian position uh, doing crime scene work. And I was really excited because that was kind of my dream job. I always wanted to, to do that. And um, this was a long time ago. This was back before like CSI was, I think they were just getting on TV. Um, but, you know, back when I was doing crime scene, we weren't even shooting with digital film. So to kind of give you an idea of um, how old I, how long I've been kind of in the field and doing these kinds of things. So I did that for a few years. Um, and uh, then I ended up in Houston due to a family medical issue, a family emergency. Uh, and while I was here, I started working at the Harris County Medical Examiner's Office doing um, forensic investigations as well as assisting with autopsy procedure. I was an autopsy technician there uh, for several years. And then um, my last position that I held here in the kind of the Harris County area was um, with the Brazoria County Children's Advocacy Center. I worked as a forensic interviewer. I interviewed children who were uh, victims of abuse, predominantly uh, children um, who were victims of sexual abuse. And I tell you all that because, and you're going to hear Professor Power's story in, in a minute too, but um, I think it's really important to know that should you choose to participate in the internship program, that you will be working with faculty that have experience working in criminal justice fields. Um, and we are connected to people in the community we have worked with people in the Harris County area, and we are known for working in the Harris County area. And we want to support our students with the internship in ways that are meaningful um, with really hands-on uh, experiences. So with that, I'll allow Professor Powers to introduce himself. I don't let him go first because he did way cooler jobs than I did. So uh, Professor Powers, it's now your turn. No, I've never done an autopsy, that's for sure. <laughs> and, and I couldn't do an autopsy, you're here. You've had an awesome, uh, awesome career. Um, so my background is also as a practitioner before uh, becoming a faculty member. Um, if, if you all are, and if you are late bloomers, uh, you're you're seeing a late bloomer here too. It took me nine years to get my undergraduate while I worked. I worked and went to school and then became a police officer while I was going to, uh, in school and then um, 
worked my way through law school with a lot of jobs and a lot of loans as well. And I graduated law school in my early 30s. I was a police officer in a city where I got the chance to work undercover and worked uh, all different kinds of assignments there in task forces. Uh, and then I went to went to went to uh, uh, law school full time um, because uh, that was what was required to to really really uh, get the most out of the experience. And so I, uh, uh, I I took a step away from criminal justice. I uh, was spent uh, some time as a prosecutor, short time as a prosecutor, and also in private practice defending police officers and judges when they were sued in in federal and state courts. Um, and I really missed law enforcement, so I uh, went in the FBI and spent twenty one years. A lot of different assignments, hostage negotiator in international investigations, a lot of different kinds of things. But I finished my career uh, as the special agent in charge here at the Houston field office after being special agent in charge of the Denver field office and also an assistant director of the FBI in Washington, working a lot with Congress in uh, uh, interagency government, government relations with other agencies, Homeland Security, Marshal Service, DEA, all kinds of different agencies and leading a team that did that kind of work. So I came to UHD part-time about the same time that uh, 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 Dr. Gilmore uh, came full-time. And then in the last couple of years, I've been here full-time and, and I've just had the absolute honor and pleasure to work with her as co-director of this, uh, of the internship program, because that's how I got my start, quite frankly, in an informal internship right along with the police department. And I got hooked. And that was what changed the course of my whole career arc and made my decisions to go forward. So uh, you're going to find from this working with us and also from even this presentation, how passionate, passionate uh, Dr. Gilmore and I are about uh, internships and why and how it, it can change the course of your path and as you discover your purpose through um, through this experience. Uh, uh, Dr. Gilmore, if you don't mind, I see that Dr. Buckler was able to jump in. I don't know if he wants to give a couple of quick welcoming words that Dr. Buckler is uh, the chair of our department. He's a big, big supporter of, of, uh, of the internship program and will be really closely involved with the internship program in the east coming semester as well. So uh, Dr. Buckler, I don't know if you want to say a hello uh, while we've got you here. He was having a few technical issues with his computer. He had to sign in and sign out. So if, if he did, there you are. You want to say sure, uh, hello? Yes, absolutely. Thank you, uh, Professor Powers. I'm going to leave my camera off because I am not feeling well and it's just ugly at this point. So uh, bear with me. Um, I just wanted to uh, say uh, my name is Kevin Buckler. I'm the department chair for criminal justice and social work. Um, I just wanted to take a moment to express how important uh, internship opportunities are in the department's short term and long term goals for students. When you think about experiential learning experiences, these are invaluable tools for student development um, in terms of professional competence, in terms of knowing how to get a job, how to apply to get a job, uh, dis establishing uh, co connections in terms of a network. Uh, persons who go through internships, students who go through internships experience all of those and it becomes a tremendous asset uh, to them long term. So if you decide to pursue this route and everything works out, uh, I think it'll be a great benefit to you. Uh, we have done a very good job in the last few semesters of increasing the opportunities for students in terms of uh, securing spots with agencies, and that is uh, due to the hard work of uh, Dr. Gilmore and Professor Powers. So I just wanted to give them a kudos, but I wanted just to welcome you and uh, and send the message that this is important and it's something that the department is very, very dedicated to in terms of your success. So thank you. Well, thanks for taking time to be here tonight, uh, Dr. Buckler. We really appreciate it because I know your day started really early too. So uh, anyway, hey, but you've all been waiting for Dr. Gilmore. I'm going to pass it back to you, Dr. Gilmore. You're the star of the show tonight. So. Oh, boy. Oh, we're in for, we're in for a treat then. <laughs> uh, you never know what may happen. So.
So uh, we might even just end up going viral. So everybody holds on tight. Okay, so let's talk about internship. Let's let's talk about the course here, the program, all the cool stuff we do. Um, and let's start off kind of with the easy stuff. What is it? Like, what is internship? Because if you look in the course catalog, it could be a little confusing. It's called field experience. We get emails from students kind of often saying, is this a field trip class? What is this? It's a fair question. It's got a weird name. Um, we call the class field experience, uh, but what it is is an internship with an approved agency partner. And students that take internship with us are able to spend their time with an agency partner while earning academic credit. So it's really cool, right? It's like a two for one, right? You get this really awesome experience with an agency partner while earning academic credit, which is great. Um, and, you know, simultaneously at the same time, you have an opportunity to build your network and kind of law, uh, learn more about what you may want to do in the future. So it's, it's a really great, great kind of deal, right? So um, students will ask us about eligibility. What do you need to do or how, how are you eligible to enroll in internship? So there's a couple of things. First, in order to take a criminal justice internship, you have to be a criminal justice major. So you have to be a declared CJ major. Um, you need to have uh, remaining elective hours left, um, and that can either be your criminal justice elective hours or your free electives. So it doesn't necessarily have to be criminal justice electives. It can be free electives as well. Um, if you are taking a minor, we'll want to make sure that it's not going to interfere with your, with your minor. Uh, you need to be a junior or senior. Now, there is some discretion with that because sometimes... Um, this particularly happens when we're when we're talking about this session in the spring. So um, let's say you're a sophomore, but you're currently enrolled in 18 hours, and then over the summer you're going to take another six hours. By the fall, you will be a junior, right? But right now on your transcripts, you show as a sophomore. So if that's the case, if like next semester you're going to be a junior, um, or when you're interested in internship, you're going to be a junior, but you know your current hours haven't populated yet. That's, that's okay. Uh, we know for the semester that you're coming in. Um, you also need to have a 2.5 GPA. We do have some discretion with the GPA requirement. Um, Professor Powers and I consider these on a case-by-case -case basis. So we, we've learned that sometimes we have students because we're a transfer institution predominantly. Most of our students transfer into our university. Sometimes students, um, you know, maybe their first, the first few times they went to college, they they weren't really prepared or they weren't really uh, had their had their head in the game, right? And they didn't do so well, didn't do as well as they thought they would. Uh, but now they've come to UHD and uh, they're taking classes and they're doing great. And while they may be on the dean's list now, um, in the semesters that they're taking classes, they have some bad grades that kind of followed them from years ago. If you're a student who um, you're performing at, at a at a at a high level now, but you have some bad grades from previous semesters or from maybe another institution that you went to, please don't make that a reason why you don't contact us. Uh, we can look at your um, we can look at your overall performance, but we can also look at how you're doing while you're here, what you've been doing in the last few semesters. Um, it was really sad. I had a student one time that. Um, and didn't contact me about internship. They were on the dean's list for two semesters in a row. They had a 4.0 for two semesters in a row, but they had a 2.47 or whatever GPA, and they thought they would be considered because they were just under the threshold. So um, please do contact us, um, you know, and let us know if if there's a if there's a concern about your GPA. Um, and so we will verify all of these things with our academic advisors prior to um, sending you to our agency partner. So those are the eligibility requirements. If you wanna do an internship, you need to meet these criteria. So why, like why would, why would you do an internship um, versus a different, another class? Um, you know, what are the benefits to completing an internship? So when you choose to do an internship with us, you will spend your hours with the agency partner. You will actually spend your time in the community uh, assigned to the community partner um, doing your internship experience with them. And in doing so, you're going to be able to gain real world experiences um, while earning your academic credit. So you'll be working with the practitioners that are doing the, the things that you may be interested in doing as a future professional. Um, and so you'll have that, you know, real time, real world interaction with the individuals that you are interested in working with. And, you know, I, I think that that is just incredibly invaluable. Um, 
you know, you may think that you want to do something and not be sure. Um, you know, I, I always think that it's really interesting that even like for people that are interested in being law enforcement officers for police cadets, right? Most police cadets, and, and I know because I interact with the ones that are in our academy, I interact with the ones that are in HPD's academy, um, most police cadets have never had a law enforcement job before. Like they don't really know what policing's about. They may have a passion to pursue policing, but they haven't seen the day in, day out um, activities that an officer engages in. Um, and so it's really an opportunity to, you know, kind of get behind the curtain, right, and, and really see what's going on um, at those agencies and what the day-to-day -day, um, activities are like. Additionally, while you're in your internship placement, uh, you will learn about potential career opportunities. So a lot of our partner agencies are rec actively recruiting, you know, um, a lot of our law enforcement uh, partners, for example, are always always actively recruiting um, some of our nonprofits, um, some of our uh, community partners are hiring. And when they are hiring for positions, they advertise those positions to our interns. They are also known, our community partners are also known for informing our interns of upcoming positions. So, um, you know, that they will reach out to our students and say, well, we don't have an opening right now, but I know that our other community partner, for example, that works with at-risk youth, or I think you'd be great for this position that's going to be opening with Harris County, and they'll let students know. So being kind of looped in to what positions are about to post, um, what positions may be a good fit for you, uh, you know, when you're in the, in the mix, right, with those agencies, um, and you're working very closely with them, you have the opportunity to learn about the career opportunities that may be coming available. Um, and I will also tell you that, you know, our community partners are infamous for emailing our interns um, right before they're about to post a job. And they'll say, hey, we're going to post this job in two weeks, but we want everyone to know about it uh, so that you can, you know, make sure you put it on your radar to apply should you be interested in applying for our agency. So that's great to get kind of looped into what's going on. Um, I am uh, kind of, I say it on repeat, like a bit of a broken record, but it's how I got as far as I did in my career and it continues to serve me constantly. Um, I absolutely believe that you are only as strong as your network. And when you're in an internship, one of the great benefits is that you have the opportunity to interact with some professionals that um, you would never have the opportunity to interact with unless you were you know, placed at their agency. And you know, we place students with our top notch, most respected professionals in the area. And you have the opportunity to ask them questions, to grow a professional relationship with them, and in the future, be able to utilize them as a resource. I will tell you that even now, I mean, I haven't worked in um, you know various fields like this in uh, 13 years, and I am still very well connected with the individuals I used to work with. They are a phone call away. Um, in fact, you know, I, I, I was just telling the story this morning, but, um, we had an event yesterday and one of the speakers at the event is an alum of our program. And he is also a, um, a current HPD investigator. And he happened on his way out of the presentation. He said, Hey, Dr. Gilmore, do you have a second? And I said, sure. And he said, I'm working this case and I, I haven't gotten closure in the case. And, I'm trying to get some information from the medical examiner's office, but I'm kind of getting the runaround and I don't know what to do. And um, and so I sent him a text message and I said, here, you should contact this person at the ME's office. And I also, he also said, I'm having some trouble with APS. I don't know who to call uh, to see where their investigation's at. And you'll hear about this later, but we just started a, a internship uh, placement with APS or Adult Protective Services. And I was able to connect him with someone over there. And um, he sent me a text message this morning and he said, I'm shocked. I've been trying to get this closure on this for 180 days. And I just got it done in like 15 minutes because you connected me to people. And so knowing individuals that you can work with and that you can call, should you have a question or should you need some guidance or mentorship or help with something uh, is totally invaluable. So you will begin building those networks. Um, a lot of our placements are very multidisciplinary, meaning you'll be exposed to law enforcement and potentially like CPS or services or community outreach or um, you know, people that work in probation. And so you'll, you'll be able to build a very uh, large network very, very quickly. And that will always benefit you as a professional um, moving forward. 
we just like to show pictures of our students because they look cool. Um, and so this is one of our uh, former interns at the CAC. I will talk more about the CAC uh, when we talk about our agency partners, but this is a um, nonprofit organization that's located on Kirby um, in Houston. They uh, serve victims of child abuse, predominantly uh, sexual abuse, that, um, and they take a very multidisciplinary approach, law enforcement, uh, CPS, and the district attorney's office, as well as um, medical professionals, uh, therapeutic interventions are all housed in this one very large four-story building, and they provide um, forensic services like forensic interviews uh, to these child victims. So it's a really a unique opportunity to interact with a lot of different professionals while working with uh, child victims. Uh, a lot of our internships, we have a lot of students that are interested in kind of outreach and prevention. Uh, the student, our student in this picture is on the left. She's got the lanyard on. Um, you know, so if you're someone who's interested in community engagement or uh, prevention in terms of mentorship, um, there's lots of agency partners that do a lot of community outreach events and a lot of preventative services. And we'll talk more about those um, in a few slides as well. Uh, job badges are always cool. Uh, so this student, um, he did an internship with the Refugee Services of Texas, which uh, provides um, intervening services for refugees and his uh, his position that he interned with them with looked at uh, individuals who are being exploited for uh, trafficking purposes um, and um, he worked with the victims of those crimes to provide um, immediate services for, for individuals and he was as soon as they he finished his internship he received a job offer so he took a picture of his badge and sent it to us so I thought it's just cool to see right like he barely gets that internship and they're hiring him uh this is kind of a neat story we had a student approach us who was interested in kind of tech crimes and we'll talk about some other unique opportunities we have that are new this semester for that but we had a student who was interested in that, and um, she applied for an internship with NASA. She earned the internship. She was placed there. And it was really neat because um, when I would go out and visit her, it was really cool because, you know, you have to have all the security clearance to get through NASA. And I would, like, pull up to the gate, and, and they would be like, oh, Gilmore's here to see Ashlyn. And then I would, you know, go through the gate, and it was just really neat. So, um, so this student uh, did that placement there with a security, um, like a cyber security type of placement. And um, I actually, you know, was there. She was offered a position with NASA upon graduation. So this is this photo was actually taken um, on a on a mural that's that's there at NASA. So really neat. Um, this is our 2023 group of communicators on patrol. There, it's a big group um, of students that we have with HPD. This is um, an incredibly unique placement. Um, I'm going to talk about this for just a minute. We are the only program in the country that has a placement like this with HPD or any agency. Um, I don't know of any other police agency that does anything like this. So the Communicators on Patrol uh, placement allows students who are bilingual or multilingual, and um, they accept a variety of languages. This semester, we currently have students in the program that speak uh, Vietnamese, Spanish, and Udu. So we have students that speak a variety of languages. And these are students that are interested in future law enforcement careers. And what these students do is they um, get in a patrol vehicle with an officer that does not speak that other language that they speak. Um, and so they ride around and they provide immediate services um, and translation, um, sometimes interpretation if it's written stuff, but translation services to uh, civilians that HPD is interacting with. And the communicator students go to all calls. They go to all calls for service that HPD is dispatched to. So there can be times where they're riding along with an officer and they respond to a traffic accident and there may be an injury. Um, but there's other times where they respond to, you know, domestic disturbances, um, individuals that have been victims of sexual assault, domestic violence, uh, missing children. Um, and I will tell you that um, this internship placement is it's near and dear to my heart. I was with it when it when it started to be built. So it's very near and dear to my heart. But um, the very first semester we had a student that was uh, engaging in this placement Um he was working an evening, almost a night shift with HPD. And that's another one of the benefits to this is that the students that do this internship, they can, you know, schedule their time to come in on the evenings, on, on even nights if they want to, on weekends, because 
HPD is always open. Uh, and so he was scheduled for a later evening shift. And um, this student um, was bilingual English Spanish speaking. And um, the officer that he was riding with was not, obviously. And he was dispatched to a call with the officer where a four year old child who was uh, nonverbal, the child was on an autism spectrum, um, had gotten out of his parents' home in the middle of the night. And the parents were very uh, diligent and vigilant parents uh, that the child had kind of a history of escaping. Um, and they had some high locks on the doors and things like that. But this child was able to like pile a chair and then like something on top of the chair and get to the lock on the very top and unlock the door. And the parents noticed he was missing within, I think the cameras was like less than 20 minutes of when he was gone, but he had toddled off in the middle of the night in the dark um, unattended, right? And so it's kind of like every parent's worst nightmare. Like you wake up and your child's missing and you don't know where they are. And uh, this family, they were English Spanish speakers, like they spoke both, but uh, their primary language was Spanish. And we know that when people are in times of panic or crisis, they revert to the language that they're most comfortable in. So obviously they were absolutely panic stricken. And, you know, I still get chills when I talk about this, like every time, every time I, I just told this story this morning and I'm getting chills again, but, um, you know, the, the, the family was, um, they were panicked and our student just happened to be the one that showed up first with this officer on scene. And they were talking very quickly and they're talking in Spanish and he was able to get a lot of very valuable information from them, including the fact that the child liked to hide in certain places. Um, he had certain things that he would do when he would get out and it was really, really valuable information. And HPD actually located the child safely, thank God, um, within 30 minutes. So uh, really cool uh, internship uh, program for those of you who are interested in law enforcement, um, even if it's not specifically with HPD, um, with just an agency where you have the ability to highlight your linguistic skills when engaging with a civilian population and, you know, maybe in a time of crisis, right? So really, really unique uh, internship program. The top uh, image is uh, one of our students. She was an FTIC student. She's been here for since she was a freshman. And uh, the gentleman next to her is Officer Pantoja. He is the officer who runs the Communicators on Patrol program. He's been uh, a big advocate of this uh, university and this program since its inception. So uh, the program's inception. So he's great. Um, he oversees our students. So that's him and her at an outreach event. And then those are all our communicators. Some of them don't have their vests on yet because they uh, we, they ran out of vests because we had so many students doing the program, which is kind of awesome. Um, so that's the Communicators on Patrol program with HPD. Um, okay, so there are two uh, different options that you can have uh, for our internship program. So you can take a three credit hour class or a six credit hour class um, when you choose to enroll in internship. And here's kind of how this breaks down. So if you choose to take the three credit hour section, in order to be um, successful in the class, not only do you have to complete all of the components that are required of you in the course, the online academic course, but you have to complete 120 hours with the agency. In a long semester, like fall or spring, that averages out to about eight hours a week of your time. Um, now that doesn't mean that every week you have to do eight hours. Um, some weeks you may do 10 hours, some weeks you may do six hours, right? It's an eight hour average um, in order for you to hit that 120 hours. As long as you make that 20, 120 hours by the deadline, uh, you're good. So um, that's the three credit hour section. The six credit hour section is the same online. You have to complete all these academic components as well. But in order to successfully pass the course, you also need to complete 100 and uh, excuse me, 240 hours with our agency partner. So the six credit hour section is exactly double the amount of hours. So the three credit hour section, 120 hours at the agency. The six credit hour section is 240. So, um, so those are your kind of your two options. So the six credit hour section, because it's double the hours, is about 16 hours a week on average with the agency partner. Now, the section that you enroll in will depend on quite a few things your academic needs. So are you in a bunch of other classes? Um, you know, do you, can you only support the three credit hour section? What is your um, availability? What is your work-life balance, right? A lot of our students are also juggling uh, jobs um, as well as other family obligations. And so what does that kind of look like for you, right? So um, the other thing is, is that 
agencies, some agencies have very specific requirements. So we have some partner agencies that will tell us that they only will accept uh, students that are seeking the three credit hour section. And we have other agency partners um, that have six credit hour section uh, internships and they only want six credit hour students. So it's the student need as well as evaluating the agency need, right? So students are allowed to earn up to six credit hours for internship. And you can do this a few different ways. You can take a six credit hour section all in one semester. So you can take a six credit hour section and do 240 hours with the agency, complete the online course and do it all in one semester. Or you can take a three credit hour section in one semester and then a three credit hour section in another semester. And uh, we have quite a few students that are actually doing this. It's really neat. And you have options when you do the three credit hour twice, you can, um, you can take it with one agency for the first uh, iteration of your course, and then you can switch to a different agency for the second iteration potentially. Or um, you can also, uh, we have some students that are interested in, they wanna do six credit hours with an agency, but they wanna do it over two semesters. So you could also do three credit hours in one semester with an agency and then continue and do another three credit hours with that same agency uh, to have kind of a longer duration of experience. Uh, and so there's options, or you could just take the three credit hour as a one time. You do not have to take a maximum of six credit hours. You can just take three, um, but there's kind of some, some differentiation in what you can do there. So you have options um, and what you decide to do and, and the ordering and the sequencing of how you decide to do it will depend on your needs as the student, as well as the needs of the agency partner. So those are some um, options for you as well as a student. Okay. So this is where students typically get excited. Uh, they want to know about like, well, who can I intern with? Um, and the answer is a lot. There, we have a lot of agencies and we have so many placements that are uh, so amazing. Uh, it's just been awesome to see our growth. So we have a lot of great agency partners that we intern with. Um, before I get started on talking about these, um, I want you to know that uh, sometimes the agency partner that you're interested in the title of the agency may not be where you want to work, but the experience that you get with the agency um, may be why we why we suggest that agency to you. So, for example, um, HPD has a lot of opportunities for students to highlight their linguistic abilities. When I have students that tell me they want to work in some types of federal agencies, um, you know, like oh, I want to work for DEA or I want to work for these agencies, well those agencies' internship placements are not incredibly hands-on, but those agencies are also notorious for wanting to hire candidates that have demonstrated linguistic skills. So if you came to me and you said, well, I want to work for the DEA um, and I speak these two languages, my recommendation would be that you uh, intern as a communicator. Because as a communicator, you with HPD, Communicators on Patrol program, you will have the opportunity to highlight your linguistic skills with that agency. Um, and we've had a lot of students kind of take that track. So sometimes uh, you have to think more about the tasks that you will be doing, the learning objectives, the outcomes assigned with that agency, as opposed to like the name of the agency, right? So it's important to kind of keep that in mind. And I'm, I'm kind of prefacing this because at the end of our presentation, we're going to ask you uh, to complete a survey, which talks about, it'll create your internship profile. And um, we wanna know what types of things you're interested in doing, what types of career uh, skills you're interested in learning and what types of things you wanna do as a future professional. Okay, so HPD. If you intern with HPD, you could be assigned potentially to an investigative department. Uh, we have students that, are assigned directly to work with detectives that investigate uh, child crimes at the Children's Assessment Center. That's the uh, building that I mentioned earlier that works with uh, children who are predominantly victims of sexual abuse. Um, we also have students that work with family violence uh, detectives and do investigations there. Um, a really good example, again, of kind of the career goal meeting the internship placement when we have students that tell us they're like their dream job is to be a homicide uh, investigator, we love to place them at the Children's Assessment Center, working alongside the detectives that do uh, sexual abuse investigations. And the reason for that is because when we have um, when you have a child victim of sexual abuse, 
uh, oftentimes child victims do not disclose or tell that their abuse has happened until years after it has happened. And so any evidence is gone. Um, there is usually no witnesses to the uh, abuse event itself, right? Other than the child and the perpetrator. Um, you know, medical evidence is hardly ever found in these cases, if at all. And there's study after study that shows that. And oftentimes children, um, you know, because the person that abuses them traditionally is someone that they love and someone that they care about, oftentimes children recant or say that the abuse didn't occur after they disclose. So from an investigative standpoint, these cases are incredibly difficult to work. Not only are they emotionally tasking, but there's just hardly any evidence in these cases. And so they're incredibly, incredibly difficult from an investigative standpoint to work. So um, that would be our recommendation to you. If you want to work homicides, um, you know, you should work child abuse investigations first because homicides are a walk in the park after that. So uh, that's a, that's one of those examples. Uh, we also have students that obviously work with the Communicators on Patrol program. That's the one I mentioned earlier. Students that are bilingual and multilingual riding around with officers, providing real-time interpretation. And then the HPD Museum Project. This is a new one. We just started this semester. Students that um, are interested in kind of uh, research um, about the history of different things. Um, it's almost kind of like an investigative um, internship because uh, HPD has a museum that they do not have a lot of people working in, in terms of researching their history. And they've asked for our students, specifically our students, to be assigned to help with kind of piecing together all this information. And it's really, really fascinating because, you know, before the internet, right, and before, um, you know, there's computers and scanners and all those things, keeping history was just something that was done on paper. So they're wanting to verify the accuracy of who was their first female officer? Who are the officers that were killed in the line of duty? What was the uh, you know, news response to officers in the 30s and 40s? What happened when they first started having female officers? What was the treatment like? You know, all those things, right? So um, it's been a really great experience for those students. Um, it's a really unique um, project. And at the end of the semester, those students are actually presenting their research findings to the HPD command staff. So that's kind of cool. Uh, Harris County Juvenile Probation has been a longtime partner of UHD. Um, it's really great when you, should you be interested in being a juvenile probation officer, there is no better placement for you. Uh, students that are placed with juvenile probation, they are allowed to rotate through the various uh, specialty courts, uh, diversionary programs, outreach and mentorship programs, um, and they kind of spend time at each one of those different branches. At the end of the semester, they also present their research um, to the chief over at juvenile probation. I will also tell you that interns that are intaked into this program, um, they are in the Harris County juvenile probation system. So uh, when they complete their backgrounds for the internship, they populate in the employee system, right? And so should you be interested in working for them, you know, if you apply later on for a job, they'll be able to pull up your history and say, oh, you were an intern here. Um, I will tell you because it's not a secret. Um, he advertises it all the time. Uh, Henry Gonzalez, who works over, he runs the entire Harris County Juvenile Probation. He teaches um, a, at our university. If you've ever had the opportunity to take a juvenile probation classroom, he's fantastic. Uh, he tells his story. He started as an intern in Harris County Juvenile Probation. And he will tell you that when it comes to hiring, he loves to hire former interns. Uh, as juvenile probation officers because they have an understanding of how juvenile probation works and they have a passion obviously to pursue it because they've spent time there with his agency. Um, the Harris County Ju uh, Children's Assessment Center, the CAC, that is the nonprofit that um, works with children who are victims of abuse and neglect. We predominantly assign our students to the training and outreach department. Um, they work a lot with uh, providing uh, outreach to the community. The last uh, spring semester, our students were all certified in Monique Burr Foundation training, which is a data-driven, empirically proven uh, program that teaches children how to be safe, um, body autonomy, um, you know, finding trusted adults, that sort of thing. It's a really important safety conversation that all kids should be having. And recently there's been some legislative mandates that say that all schools need to be training kids in this. Well, schools don't really know how to train kids in this. And so they're reaching out to the assessment center training department saying, what do we do? 
So um, in the spring of last semester, our students were training at all of the spring ISD elementary schools. So they were going out there and talking to kids about these things and providing that training uh, to, to children in, um, in real time. So that was great. Um, also students that are uh, placed out there are assigned to a mentor. So if you're interested, for example, in learning about forensic interviewing or talking to kids that are victims of abuse, it's a very systematic approach, or maybe you want to be an attorney and you want to prosecute child abuse cases, or maybe you want to be a defense attorney and you want to defend people who are accused of um, crimes involving children. All of those different uh, individuals are working. You know, you have the attorney, DA's office and you have a CPS, they're all housed there. So you have the opportunity to engage with those professionals because of the multidisciplinary nature of the environment. Uh, the landing is another one of our partners. We have a student who's out there this semester. This is a uh, nonprofit organization that works with trafficking victims. Um, this is a really kind of a, it depends on the day kind of an internship. Uh, they provide um, outreach and community service and education, but they also, they're in the in the Bel Air area, so they provide, um, you know, uh, intermediate or immediate services should they have a client come in, uh, you know, that needs immediate, uh, you know, assistance. Um, they also have um, on-site, uh, you know, services that are provided sometimes, whether it be community outreach, uh, mental health, counseling, uh, things of that nature. So, the Landing is a, is a nonprofit, um, and they're also uh, pretty well known with some of our law enforcement partners as well. So, uh, you know, for example, I was just I was just talking to an HPD officer about a student who's doing a trafficking project. And the HPD officer was like, oh, well, they have to go talk to the landing. I mean, the landing is that's where they do all that, you know, so they're well known throughout the um, the Harris County area. I'm now going to hand it over to Professor Powers because these are some of our newer uh, internship partners that he has been working with students with this semester. Thanks, Dr. Gilmore. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, we're pretty excited about some of these new partnerships. As Dr. Buckler said, we've been growing this program to give more students the opportunity to have these experiences. And so Dr. Gilmore and I worked pretty hard on this. Um, to, and let me just give you a snapshot of some of these. That's why I see the asterisks there because they're newer. So uh, Office of the Harris County Attorney, they do a lot of public interest uh, cases involving adults, the hospital district, uh, uh, homeless outreach and things like that. A number of issues and there are uh, law enforcement investigators assigned to work right alongside the lawyers that are in the Harris County Attorney's Office. Now, it's not the district attorney that prosecutes cases. This is a separate the Harris County Attorney's Office. Um, it's very, very unique and very special. And uh the senior investigator who supervises our intern there is actually uh, a graduate. Both uh, Dr. Gilmore and I had him in our classes. He's amazing. His name is um, uh, Raphael. Um, oh gosh, I'm missing Raphael's last name, Grenada. So uh, uh, just an amazing guy. Just Raphael's just an amazing guy, and he is, he supervises the the um, student there. So that student gets an opportunity not only to be partner in investigations and participate in investigations, uh, but also work alongside lawyers and other agency lawyers to do this. So it's a very, very special and unique placement uh, where you get to see all parts of the criminal justice system at one uh, time working together from investigators, lawyers, civil ca cases, and criminal cases all in concert to attack problems in the greater uh, Houston area. Now, Adult Protective Services, uh, Dr. Gilmore mentioned, you know, talking about the experiences and I may want to investigate this, but, uh, you know, uh, why would you suggest I work over here in an internship because you can't go by the title? So Adult Protective Services, we know what CPS is, well, Adult Protective Services, but the students that we've uh, steered here are ones that will tell us, uh, I want to be a federal investigator, I want to look at white collar crime or financial crimes, or I'm interested in complex investigations. Well, guess what? Adult Protective Services um, has a new financial exploitation unit. That what they do is they, that there's allegations that someone is embezzling the money, misdirecting money, stealing money from, um, uh, from uh, older adults over which they may have guardianship or they may just have just started uh, befriending them and are bleeding their money away. These students have been trained in looking at bank, bank statements and evidence of embezzlement and redirection of money. They ride alongside of an investigator and go out in the field. None of these are like filing jobs or financing jobs. These are the real deal jobs 
that you're doing alongside. And uh, they will maybe um, do some phone calls on wellness checks on their, on their own to uh, to circle back with uh, clients and and vulnerable adults that they've been working with. So they the typical day is they'll get picked up by the uh, investigator that they're working with, and they'll be hitting the road and spending their day right alongside investigator doing home visits, uh, looking at bank records, and talking to lawyers and prosecutors. So it's a re- it is a very very unique opportunity to actually participate in complex, uh, relatively complex white collar crime type of investigations it happens to be through Adult Protective Services. Uh, 351st uh, Criminal Circuit Court, that's a felony court. We have uh, three interns with them right now. This was also new with uh, Judge Nana Cornelio. She's amazing, Judge Cornelio. She's a very passionate about supporting students. But this week they've been sitting right up front uh, in uh, during murder trial. During all of the court, when they're there, um, they will be seated. They're sitting in the jury box straight. If there's no jury, they'll sit right there where they're hearing all the conversation between the lawyers and the judge and learning. Uh, if the, the jury box is full, they'll be sitting with the court clerk and the officers of the court that are running these trials. And then they get lectures and ex- other experiences and other exposure to the court. And these are students that are very interested typically in uh, public service law, going to law school and working in, in public service law, either defense attorney, pro- uh, prosecutors, or something similar to that. And so it's been an amazing experience. And we're going to be expanding that. Dr. Uh, or Judge Conario loves our students so much. She's going to be working with us to expand our placements into uh, misdemeanor court. And what's cool about that is misdemeanor court, they use a whole lot more alternatives to sentencing and restorative justice concepts and a lot of things. So it's a really different approach when you're dealing with misdemeanors rather than felonies, um, where you really get to see all kinds of solutions being employed in our criminal justice system to make sure that justice is served while also that defendant is treated in the way that's best going to prevent them coming back before the court in the future. Um, so Houston Revision is a nonprofit that Dr. Gilmore's worked with for many years. Um, very, very strong. It's in the Sharpstown area because of the large refugee and immigrant community that's down there. Uh, we were able to re-energize that post-COVID because they were really affected by COVID. But they do a lot of unique things very, very briefly because we could talk a lot about it. But they are involved in both prevention, working with refugees, but also in, with the students who are in, in juvenile probation, they have um, a program uh, where they have a, a trusted messenger program where they walk alongside a student on juvenile probation. Maybe they don't have a parent or family member that can help them succeed. So they're actually assigned to one of our interns and they go to the probation meetings with them and they help them succeed in succeed in uh, completing the terms of their probation so they don't uh, re-enter the system and continue to be justice involved. So that's really life-changing. Um, so there's just a lot of different things like that. Um, we're really proud of our recent um, agreement with the Harris County Sheriff's Office uh, that we worked for the last six months on really, really hard. That's very exciting. You know, we, we've, we've been partners with HPD for a long time, with an amazing department with tremendous support for our program from the very top, from the chief's office on down. Well, Harris County Sheriff's Office, the sheriff is a graduate of our program. And we've got a lot of different opportunities there that we are working into right now. The We will have opportunities in cold case. They really want some of our interns because there's only one investigator doing cold cases. So they want a, a couple of students there that want to be investigators to work in that. Uh, adult special crimes, child abuse, uh, they have a need for the academy if someone's interested in training and working in that. 911, working with legal protection, uh, protective orders, high tech crimes and and um, and uh, crimes involving information technology, uh, all different kinds of, jo- of uh, crisis intervention teams and neighborhood policing. They have a lot of different opportunities for uh, Dr. Gilmore and I to match a student with their career interest and career goals. And finally, we have a brand new partner in Crime Stoppers. You know about that. That's the folks that take the tip line and there's a whole group of HPD investigators there and other investigators in that building. It's uh, one of the most uh, most strongest uh, uh, nonprofits in the whole area when it comes to support and community reach. And so uh, we've just met with them and they're very, very 
excited about taking our interns. And so we're in the developing specific placement spots with them as we speak. Uh, so that may very well uh, depend on what the interest of the student is and what their uh, need is right now, but they do have tremendous needs. So those are just some examples in the, the some of the agencies that I'm working with um, and supervising the students in our course with these. So back to you, Dr. Gilmore. Thank you, Professor Power. So in short, like we've got it going on. OK, uh, we have some amazing agency partners. Like when I see this list, I'm always so proud because um, we're growing things and and you should know, too, um, that when you intern with us, uh, you are um, going to get a very, very hands on, very unique experience uh, and not only from the agency partner, but also from uh, Professor Powers and I, and that uh, kind of leads me into our next, uh, you know, kind of chunk of information, which is, okay, like I have electives left and I meet the eligibility requirements and a bunch of these sound cool. So what do I do? Like, how do I get into internship and how do I apply? And so here is kind of a breakdown of our application process. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to verify, verify, are you eligible to enroll in the internship course. We talked about the requirements, um, but we also involve the academic advisors, the advising team in on this conversation to make sure that you are eligible to enroll. So um, should you express interest, we will verify your eligibility first. Then um, you get to have a very specialized meeting with Professor Powers or myself, or sometimes both of us. <laughs> um, and what we do is we take the information from the survey that you complete, which there'll be more on that at the end of the presentation, but you, uh, we take the information from the survey that you complete and we want to meet with you to determine what type of placement is best for you. And we wanna think about a bunch of different things. We wanna think about what do you wanna do in the future? What are your career goals? What type of agency do you want to work with? Uh, what types of skills do you wanna learn? What type of skills do you want to expand upon? Um, Maybe there's a profession that you're interested in and you you don't know anyone uh, that's ever done that type of work. So you're interested in this really intensive networking uh, opportunity. Um, also, we want to know what internship will also fit you. So um, we ask that you be as transparent as possible when you're filling out the um the initial survey and also when you're talking to us. Uh, we have students that have uh, some transportation um, difficulties. Uh, we have students that'll tell us, I need to be able to um, get an internship that's, uh, I can have public transportation available. No, not a problem, right? We can do that, we do that every semester. Um, we ask that students tell us about, you know, their work-life balance. Most of our interns do work. Um, and so what type of hours do you have at your other job? What other obligations do you have beyond school, right? Do you take care of uh, family members? Do you take care of children? Are you responsible for uh, elderly and aging uh, people in your family? Uh, so what are your other obligations? Because not all internships are the same. The hours vary, right? Some agencies are more eight to five type agencies. Uh, other agencies, um, you know, um, accommodate students that need weekend, evening, or even nighttime hours. Uh, HP is a great example of that, but we have other partners that do that as well. Uh, some agent, we have to consider location for transportation needs, but also just in terms of your drive time, right? Uh, so driving time back and forth, um, you know, how much training that agency requires. So all of these things vary. So we meet with you, um, we have a one-on-one -on -one, uh, conversation, and we find out what your goals are, uh, what you aspire to do, what types of skills you want to learn and acquire, and um, what your needs are as a student, and come up with um, best, um, best practices in terms of what agency we, we think you would be a best fit with. So then um, we complete in internship intake tasks. I have a separate slide on that in a minute, but we'll talk about some of those uh, intake tasks. So then we begin to kind of put you through this process where you're completing tasks with us um, as you kind of move through the process. We then connect you with the internship coordinator at the placement site. So um, what we will do is after we determine what agency is the best fit for you, we then email introduce you to the coordinator at that placement site. So, um, and we do this for a few reasons. One is that, you know, you're gonna begin the application process. Every single agency that we work with has a different application. They have a different application process and a different uh, timelines and deadlines. 
And so some agencies, for example, first require that students do a very quick initial interview. Um, and like even within agencies, things are different. So for example, if you apply with HPD for the investigative position at the CAC, your, your uh, intake process is very different than if you apply to be a communicator. If you apply to be a communicator with, that, with HPD, the very first thing they do is call you in and make sure you can speak that language. And so they do a language screening on you uh, very first thing. So it's very different. Um, sometimes students, when they're applying with the agency partner, uh, they have uh, questions like on page 16 of the application, it says I need to include a copy of my driver's license. Do I include a copy of the front? a copy of the front and the back? Does it have to be a color copy, a black and white copy? This is a great question, but I don't know the answer to it because I don't work at that agency, right? So I don't know um, what that agency requires. So by introducing you to the coordinator at that site, you're able to contact them and ask them any questions you may have. And you're also able to stay in touch with them about the, the status of your application. So some of our agency partners, um, the background and intake process can take uh, months. It can take several months. And some of them have very, very tight deadlines and turnaround times. We'll talk about that more in a minute um, where, you know, for example, Harris County, um, for the interns that we're placing there, we are getting those interns rolled out to them at the very beginning of November. So uh, it's very soon for the spring interns that they need those names to start beginning uh, processes with them. Um, other agencies, their background can take less than two weeks. They're, you know, from the time that we send a student to them to the time that they're completed uh, is less than two weeks. So you should know that because we intake our students based on best fit. And then we then start working with them in the order of the agency deadline. So sometimes students can get a little impatient with us. They're like, I haven't heard anything from you in two weeks. Um, that What that means is that the agency that you are gonna be a best fit with uh, they probably don't have a deadline uh, that's really Im impending. So we're trying to get the students that have those impending deadlines to their agency partner first, and we're working through them in the order that makes the most sense, right? Um, so once you apply with the agency and you know complete all the paperwork, do the background, the fingerprinting, whatever the agency requires of you, if you're successfully uh, offered, if you're offered an internship opportunity with that agency, the very last thing that you do is enroll in the internship course, which is called the field experience course um, here at UHD. And this can be a little confusing to students, right? Because, you know, the spring semester is about to start, you know, or the, the schedule is about to be open. So students are like, well, I want to, I know, I, I know I want to do an internship. I need to be able to enroll in the class. Uh, we do not allow you to enroll in the class until you have the offer in hand from the agency, right? Um, and that's for your protection. It would be silly to let you enroll in internship class if you did not have an internship uh, offer with an agency because there's no way you could be successful because you have to complete 120 hours with that agency or 240 hours depending on your section, right? So it'd be silly to offer you a placement when we don't know if you could be successful in it. So what we do is we make sure that um, that you are enrolled in the, um, you enroll in the class last. It's the last thing you do. Now, what we recommend to students is if they want to uh, seek an internship, what they need to do is, um, let's say that you want to take internship in the spring and you're really dedicated to it and you want to take the three credit hour section. When you are, um, when registration opens for spring, enroll in an elective that you want. Enroll in a good elective. Choose one that you want um, as topic area they're interested in um, so you can pick from you know the electives. From, you can get your favorite pick, your best pick. Enroll in that elective. Apply with the agency, complete our intake tasks. Um, if you're offered the internship placement, what we then do is we you can drop out of that elective and add back into the internship course. Um, and that, that elective kind of serves as a placeholder, right? It, it holds your place um, so that your financial aid, if you're if you're getting uh, loans, you're in the enrolled in the correct amount of hours, right? You don't have to add internship in at the last minute and try to get your financial aid adjusted and all those things. Um, and if, let's say something were to happen, um, you know, you were to change your mind or you had a family emergency, we rarely have this happen, but at least then you're enrolled and you can't take internship, at least then you're enrolled in an elective that you really want, right? So for your protection, we always say enroll in the elective um, 
that you are most interested in. And then we can drop an ad, you know, drop ads. You give your person to drop ad and out of a class, you know, up until the first week of classes should the need arise. So um, that's for you uh, so that you're enrolled in the class that you uh, want to be in. So let's talk just a little bit about these different tasks that we do with our students when we intake them. Um, we want you to know that you will be provided with a lot of support by us when you are interested in an internship. So we we do a lot of uh, support for you, kind of career counseling, coaching, um, so that this placement is really beneficial to you. So I talked a lot about finding the best fit for you um, with agency uh, assessment and pairing. Um, we do expect that our, prof our students um, you know, engage in professional correspondence, professional behavior. We have very, very high standards for our students. We are known as a department for having incredibly professional students, and we have no intentions of deviating from that. So we expect that every student will treat um, this internship opportunity as um, a professional opportunity and so that they correspond professionally, interact professionally, engage with us professionally at all times, as well as with our agency partners. Um, we will help you with your interviewing techniques. We sometimes have students that are a little uh, concerned about uh, interviewing and that's it's okay. Like it's okay to be nervous. It's okay to not have experience doing those things is what we're here for. We'll provide you with coaching uh, for that. There's also, um, you know, confidentiality, trust and ethics uh, concerns that you will be uh, reviewed with you. Our agency partners are going to allow you to have access to at-risk uh, populations, vulnerable populations, victims of crimes, uh, justice-involved individuals. So all people that are protected populations, vulnerable populations, uh, you will have access to information that is uh, confidential. Uh, we have absolutely no tolerance for students that uh, don't treat that as a privilege and do not uphold standards of confidentiality and and trust and agency policy. So, um, you know, having conversations about, you know, what what is not appropriate to share um, over coffee with someone or uh, post on social media, God forbid, um, you know, because we expect uh, that students will uphold those. Um, we also talk quite a bit um, throughout the semester, as well as prior to semester starting about the importance of self-care. In criminal justice, we have a lot of professionals that burn out quite quickly. And so self-care is something that will be practiced not only, um, you know, uh, we will talk about it before the semester begins, but was also something we'll engage you in throughout the semester while you're enrolled in the course. So um, we may add additional tasks onto these at the discretion if we realize that you need anything uh, during that time. So um, it's important to remember that internship is a class. So it's an academic class that we teach the class online. Um, you will be doing your hours in the community, but you have to engage every week online. Um, with us as directors, uh, we do have a, um, a, you know, discussion boards and self-care practices. We have students engage in productivity uh, tasks where they look at time management and, you know, how to use the first hour of their day best, uh, things like that. Um, Students do produce professional documents at the end where they incorporate the skills that they've learned at internship. They do final presentations. Um, students check in with us midway through the semester. That's a requirement of the course. They also check in with us at the end of the semester. And so uh, you get a lot of kind of hands-on uh, coaching from us. Um, and so uh, some agencies may require some additional things from you, but you get a lot of uh, academic, uh, through the academic course, you get a lot of um, engaging um, you know, opportunities with Professor Powers and I. So it's a really great opportunity to kind of grow yourself professionally, thinking about things like workplace culture and uh, how to best take care of yourself. And we do that in the academic course. So in the spring, it'll be taught in Canvas. Um, actually, we're teaching in Canvas right now. And um, and so you'll be able to, uh, to engage uh, in that academic component of the course online. So you don't come to class with us, although you do check in with us and we do site visits with you throughout the semester. Okay, um, I'm gonna let Professor Powers talk about our cool uh, QR code and survey. All right, as, as uh, Dr. Gilmore said, this is really critical because it's uh, this is what builds your profile. So let me share with you why this is important. We're gonna take about five minutes for you to start this right now, five or six minutes and while we take some questions. But everything starts with this. If you are absolutely decided, no way, I'm never going to do an internship, that's okay, no problem. If they're only mildly interested or possibly interested, do this 
profile now because everything flows from this. What happens to this is there's a Qualtrics survey um, and uh, what happens is uh, you will fill out some things about yourself, what your interests are, what your concerns are, what you're worried about, things like that. And then, uh, and then um, that gets put into a spreadsheet, an Excel sheet. And that is our basically our tracking document for the whole process for you. And so with this said that uh, the results, what you put in gets put into a, a master uh, spreadsheet and we work from there. You are not uh, signing a contract where there's no way you can change. You can't change your mind. If you change, if you decide no, or you decide to defer, that's okay. But to be eligible for us to, to start working on this, you need to go ahead and fill this out now. Um, so that we can just start the process. As Dr. Gilmore mentioned, uh, we have some really tight deadlines. Uh, uh, some Harris County uh, folks need some stuff in the first week in November, and we, that means we've got about five or six steps to do ahead of that. So I need you to do that now. Um, I got a chat message asking for the link. Uh, I think it's, for some reason it's not doing the QR code. Is that what you're saying, Amanda, is anybody else having trouble getting the QR on the screen to, to populate, to do the thing? Go ahead and unmute and tell me if you are. I don't know if I have the link handy. I can look right quick and I'll work on that. Email it to you too. And we can um, email it too. Because I know I've been- You're able to get it? Okay. okay, you were able to get it. Great, Amanda. Thank you, uh, uh, because I should have been prepared with the link. I should have put that in the chat. So thanks for, for that. But please go ahead and do it now. You can always change your mind and say no later, no harm, no foul. But we can't even start with you. Um, it, as Dr. Gilmore will tell you, we'll have a student that's like, uh, you know, oh, I forgot to do this. And three weeks from now, they'll do it. And okay, gosh, guess what? You know, we've already placed, uh, you know, the first, you know, six slots, including the one that you really wanted, because we're going by that order of deadlines. Um, you know, for, for January, we have to do some now. We promised them our list and Dr. Gilmar and I have to get folks screened. We have to get them approved by their academic advisor. We have to approve them because we are putting our stamp of approval on you when you we recommend you to that agency. And we really have really good, I, th I think we're batting 100, aren't we, Dr. Gilmore? We've never had one of the students we recommend to be rejected by an agency, at least not while I've been working with you. No, not one time. And, so we, and we take such pride in that. Like, yeah. it, it sounds like a lot. It sounds like a lot. Like, oh, I have to meet with you and I have to do professional emails and I have to do this and I have to do that. I will tell you, if you happen to be at a placement site where you're engaging with other interns, you're, you're going to walk in there and you're going to be so much more prepared than a lot of other students that may not have had all that coaching. And so we have an exceptionally good reputation. Um, we have agency partners coming to us now and saying, well, we're going to take more of your students. Your students are amazing. Um, and so what, what Professor Powers is talking about, that stamp of approval, um, we work really, really hard and we have very, very high standards. And you want that, right? Don't you want to know that everyone that's been at the placement before you has been has been amazing? That's that's awesome, right? It's for you walking in there to know that your university has that reputation, so it does. Um, and he's right; we've never um, we've never had a student get rejected, which no, is amazing. Because so, we take it really seriously, you know. Again, Dr. Gilmore and I uh, have been working in these agencies. We know what they look for. We know the questions they ask. We know about fits, and we know how to prepare you so you can succeed. So uh, that that brings me to another point that I want to mention is, you know, we've had others when they talk about things they're worried about, you know, maybe clothes, it may be transportation, maybe that they've had, that's one of the questions you're answering right now, or maybe that they had a little brush with with the criminal justice system in, a, in an uncomfortable way. We can work through all of those. But I have had students that, um, they, that say, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know. I'm shy or I'm worried or my language, you know, I'm, I'm, sometimes I'm concerned about my language ability uh, because, you know, I wasn't raised in an English speaking home or just name it. And we have some amazing success stories, right? Like Leticia, uh, why don't you tell that story, how she yeah. changed from the beginning to the very end. You tell it better than I do. I love that story. Well, it makes me cry a little bit sometimes. So I'm going to try not to cry. But we had a student who um, 
we almost had to kind of push her to do an internship a little bit. Um, she filled out the survey. She came to our information session, just like you all are. But when we were, when Professor Powers was screening her and I actually, I talked to her first and she was like, I just, I'm really shy and I don't have anyone in my family that's done criminal justice. And I'm not sure if I'm going to be a good fit. And like, I don't know if anyone's going to even want me and I'm, I'm really quiet. And I don't know how to, I don't know how to find my own voice. And she was just really, and, um, and we were like, no, you need to do an internship. Like it can change your life. And, um, Professor Powers was great. He really kind of coached her up and spent a lot of time talking to her and, and getting her ready and finding her a placement that would be uh, great for her, for something that she was really passionate about. She was really, really passionate about working with um, at-risk youth um, because she had, um, you know, some, some personal experiences, not, not that she was an at-risk youth, but kind of being around that population, she's very passionate about serving that population in an interventive way. And so uh, Professor Powers found her a great placement at Houston Revision and um, got her assigned to a really great mentor out there and met with her, you know, very regularly, just like we do with all our other students. And I mean, she went from being like so quiet and shy to like, incredibly outspoken, um, coming up with the recommendations for the program. And she was just a rock star. And at the end of the semester, they they didn't even have a job opening, but they just made one for her. They just made her a position because they wanted her so bad. And so imagine being the student who at the start of the screening process is like, I don't even, I don't even know if I could get an internship to becoming the student that the agency's like, we're just gonna find the money to hire you because you're so amazing, right? And that's what happened in the course of, you know, one semester. And so we're super proud of her out there. Like when we go out there now, we're like, hey, you're married. And she's like, oh, hi, you know, and it's just really neat to, to see someone grow and develop like that. So um, you may not know your own strengths until you put yourself in these positions. And some of them may be a little uncomfortable, right? Um, you may have to push beyond the boundaries of your comfort. And I promise that you will grow and develop and um, you will come out just so much stronger uh, than you were before. And we are here to support you along the way. So it's, she's just awesome. She's just awesome. We have so many success stories, but she's just great. We're so proud of her. We're so proud of Leticia. So any questions for us as we're getting close to winding up here, please, please, please go ahead and, and do that now because if you forget to do it later, it, it only takes about 10 minutes to do it. It's mm -hmm. very quick, but we really, really need that if you think in any way you might be interested. We'll give you a chance to think about it and reflect on it, but at least we got you started now and we got you in the system with this uh, with this uh, profile document. And uh, so any questions right now, please shout, please shout out anybody um and oh maybe the chat let me see uh how soon are the decisions made okay so do you mean ryan do you mean in terms of um where to place students or okay victoria too um so here's what here's kind of our timeline if you're asking kind of about our timeline and what we do so what we do is um the students that fill out this survey those are our priority students because we know that you've come to our information session and you know about the internship process. And so what we do is we are, we are going to take, we had a session this morning and now we have a session tonight. Tomorrow, we're going to take all that data and we're going to start to compile it into an Excel sheet. And what we do is we look at um, the student needs and, and what they're interested in and we start verifying the student eligibility with advising. Once we have students verified, we start to get in touch with students. We look at all the information that you gave us in that profile, and we look at all that information and we start to uh, make appointments to meet with students um, to see where, to have that as initial assessment with them and to see where they uh, may be a good fit for. So um, some of some students may be hearing from us by the end of next week, as early as in next week, because we have some really tight deadlines that we're working on. Um, and and how that ordering kind of works is based on what the student is expressing in their survey in terms of um, where they may be you know, a good fit for, right? So we prioritize them kind of in that order. But um, there will be students that are hearing from us before the start of, of November. Um, Can I add something to that? I'm sorry. Absolutely. Yeah, no, go. Yeah. Oh, you're good. Uh, 
I had, I, I'm not going to say this in case you're thinking it and, and because I got asked this by a student, you're not going to go, you're not going to get a message that says, oh, you're being assigned to name the agency. And it's part of that conversation where we explain what we know and we learn about you and, and that kind of thing. And we say, hey, I really think we should recommend you. I think you would really fit in this agency or this partner agency and why. And we have a conversation about it because there's no surprise. You're not going to be arbitrarily assigned to something where we just start filling in the blanks for something. It is a conversation and you will feel good about it and, and agree with it, our recommendation and we will too. And that's how we'll pitch you to the agency and, and put our seal of approval on you. So it's a very, very uh, interactive and in partnership process together with you as basically your career coaches, your your uh, your success coaches. So, okay, that's a great. We got two good questions. Okay, so the first one is: is the internship available for fall twenty twenty four? Absolutely. Uh, we have uh, students uh, that will be interning for fall. Um, so you can intern for spring or for fall. Obviously, if you're interested in fall, right, um, when we look at your intake uh, paperwork, and if you're only interested in fall, right, like so meaning you don't want one in the spring, you only want one in the fall, uh, then you'd be a student that gets contacted kind of at the middle of the spring semester uh, next semester, right? So we wouldn't be starting to send you to an agency until midway through spring of next semester. Um, how would interviews work? So Victoria, do you mean the interviews that we do with you, um, Professor Powers and I do with you, or that the agency does with you? Because you kind of, there's kind of a couple different types of interviews uh, that we do, uh, that students kind of go through. So the first one. Okay, so what we do is, um, we want to make sure that our students are really prepared for when they interview with the agency. So we'll have a meeting with you where after we've looked at your profile, we'll, one of us will, will reach out to you and say, you know, we'd like to meet with you um, to schedule a, uh, an interview with you or an initial assessment kind of talk through, um, you know, uh, please let us know, you know, we have this time, this time, this time, this time available. And I will tell you too, this brings up a really good point. If you're interested in an internship for the upcoming semester, please make sure you're checking your email um, and you're staying on top of that because we don't want you to miss an email from us. If we send an email to you, um, you know, we expect you to respond to it, right? Sometimes we have students that they won't see our email for, you know, two or three weeks and they'll respond back to us like three weeks later and we're like, we we already assigned somebody else. We thought you weren't interested because you didn't respond, right? So um, we need you to be responsive to the email. So um and so we we will send you an email and we'll give you some opportunities to uh, schedule some time to talk with us. And then um, the initial interview is kind of just like an intake to kind of see what you're interested in, get a feel for um, your strengths, what needs you may have, uh, what things you're interested in. And so we traditionally do those on Zoom. Uh, sometimes that we've done phone calls as well. Uh, sometimes we have students that are on campus when we're on campus. So if that's what you'd prefer to do, uh, you know, depending on the, the director that you get and the availability and stuff like that, or if we have a really tight deadline. So uh, they can be done on Zoom. Um, that's spring 2024. I thought it was spring. By the way, I thought it was spring. Yeah, you can do for spring 2024. So um, so we'll do an interview with you. And then um, if you need some kind of coaching for your uh, interview before you get ready, we may schedule a second meeting with you um, where we kind of coach you through, hey, we're going to be sending you to um, this agency, uh, you know, they may be asking these questions, let's do some practice, uh, stuff like that. So we want to make sure that our students, when they interview for the agency, that they're well prepared, that they um, are prepared to answer the questions of the agency. We don't know exactly what questions you're going to be asked. We want to make sure you are, um, it said spring 2023. Oh, was that, oh, was that on the survey where it said spring? 2023. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Just excuse that. So spring 2024 is what we meant. So just ignore that, uh, that checkbox. So, uh, we know you'll be, if you, if you put spring, we'll know what you mean. Uh, but thanks for letting us know. So we'll, 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 uh, we'll check into that, but yeah. So, um, so we do those interviews, uh, with you and, um, you know, just to make sure that you're kind of well prepared. Okay. Well, that's helpful. So, um, does that help answer your question? And, and, and by the way, we'll uh, 
uh, if you've got a question that's more personal, I'll stop recording in a few minutes and you can ask. We'll hang around for a few minutes and you can do that. Uh, but right mm -hmm. now, these are questions that are really helpful for anybody who's going to watch this, uh, watch this who wasn't able to attend the, the session. So these are really great questions. So okay. but and in a minute, I we'll cut it off. Yeah. Okay. And Victoria, I know you, so I'll just, I'll write, I'll make a note. She, I guess the survey, Professor Powers, is, is, says spring 23, not spring 24. Yeah, yeah we so. wound up, yeah, we wound up using the previous, um, the previous uh, survey. So it didn't okay. get edited. So, but we'll so know. So we know, yeah. we'll know. Okay. Well, Thank you for letting us know, though. Thank yeah, you. Thank you, Victoria. Any any other any other questions uh, before I stop recording and give you a chance to ask a private one if you want to? Anybody else? Going once, going twice. Well, uh, uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for watching this video. If you're watching it after the fact, uh, uh, Dr. Gilmore put our contact information here. Feel free to email one or both of us. We both work this together, uh, but we're kind of joined at the hip. We uh, we we tend to come to the same conclusions on any advice we give to students amazingly. And uh, and so you'll get pretty consistent support and information from both of us. Anything else you want to add, Dr. Gilmore or, or Dr. Butler, before we I quit recording to the students who will be watching this um, after afterwards? apply just apply it, it's going to change your life um we have a great program here um i we're here we're here because we love uh working with our students and our students in this program i mean it's just it just can change so much of what you're doing and so please apply and and also please know that we are here to support you so like, for example, if you're a student who's sitting there and you're going, oh, man, I, I would I would love to have that court internship and I have a really high GPA and I worked so hard and I want to get into law school and I've, I've been, I have a 4.0 and I'm a great student, but I just I don't have any court clothes. I, I didn't have court clothes when I was an undergrad. OK, um, email one of us. Uh, it's completely confidential. We can make sure you have court clothes. Okay. Um, if you have something that, you know, you might be embarrassed about, or maybe, you know, something happened to you previously or a victim of a crime, something's happened, please tell us, like, we will keep your information, um, you know, in accordance with policy, of course, this is a confidential, but we can get you resources if you need them. Um, and we want to be here to support you, but please be encouraged to apply because internship is awesome. Our internship is awesome. And our program is amazing and you will absolutely love it. I see Dr. Buckler has his hand up. So I'm going to let him go. Go ahead, Dr. Buckler. Yes. I just wanted to uh, express my appreciation to Dr. Gilmore and Professor Powers. I think this is the third time I've set through this presentation. And each time I leave thinking, wow, it can't get any better than that. And each time they impress me. Uh, the next go round. Um, and I also want to thank the students for their interest in the program and uh, really exceptional questions that you asked. It's uh, very heartening to see the level of interest and uh, that's often comes through in terms of the types of questions you ask in the volume. So thank you very much for your interest. Thank, thank you, Dr. Buckler. Thank you. Well, I'm going to stop recording now and feel free to ask a more private question if you want. So one, two, three, goodbye. <laughs>